So if you're coming from my first channel, this video is to talk about the matrix, right? People often use the term red pilled, blue pill, whatever, and it's a reference to people kind of waking up to the realities of the world. But everybody has a different opinion over what red pilled actually is or what woke really means. Everyone claims to be awake and everyone, everyone else is sleeping. Now, here I have pulled up this article from The Atlantic, The Last Jedi, the best Star Wars movie since 1980. I hated that movie. I felt Rey had just godlike powers for no reason. They were characters who literally vanished. This is what blows my mind. Okay, full on spoilers. After, uh, so I'll wait a second again. Spoiler alert, I'll give you more time. After Finn and Rose are captured on Snoke's ship, there are hundreds of stormtroopers surrounding them. Phasma is standing right next to them and says, you know, execute them or whatever and they put the blade, the, the electric current thingy to, to Finn's head or whatever, that's when Holdo does the light speed jump and slams into Snoke's ship. The next scene has Finn laying on the ground and all of the stormtroopers are gone. Phasma is now on the other side of the ship. And so that is just one example of the, the, the insane faults in storytelling in Star Wars The Last Jedi that kept happening. People criticize it for its jokes. They criticize it for breaking the Star Wars canon. No, I'm actually sitting there saying, listen, I'm trying to, you're telling me a story from point A to point B. And if it's like a hundred people here one second and they're all gone the next, you're not telling me a story. It's literally just random scenes duct taped together because you said they should be together. It makes no sense. I thought the movie was terrible. More to the point to get away from my complaints. Most of the people I know are complaining about it. And it's really weird because I don't hang out with people on the right. I hang out with people on the left. My lefty skateboarder friends who are smoking pot with long dreads are like, man, that movie sucked. But I go online and I see these stories, the best Star Wars movie since 1980. Now let's look at this next story. IndieWire, alt-right group, takes credit for The Last Jedi Backlash, bashes Star Wars for including more women. I don't know, among my friends, no one's been complaining that there are more women in Star Wars. Sure, there's been criticisms online and, and there are a lot of people who are saying it's an SJW film, but I, I, don't, I don't care about that. Hey, I think it's great that they, they have an Asian female character, Rose, who's just a terrible character. So why am I talking about Star Wars? This is not a video made to rant about Star Wars. This is a video made to talk about The Matrix. This IndieWire article is an example of what I'm kind of talking about. This is crazy. This. You know, they've created a boogeyman, the alt-right. And the alt-right, was it's responsible for everything. They're Nazis now, they hate Star Wars. Why? I, okay, <laughs> how does the alt-right and Star Wars, like, relate? W what is going on here? When I go on Reddit and I see these posts that are absolutely detached from reality, it confuses the hell out of me. There are posts, you know, I did a video about this uh, uh, the other day talking about how Reddit users actually believe Jill Stein may be implicate may, may actually have colluded with Russia and I'm just like when I talk to normal people they don't know anything about this what is going on I don't want to it, it feels crazy it feels weird that so many people like Star Wars completely ignoring the fact that there are glaring plot holes and it's it's not even necessarily a plot hole right I understand sure some people were entertained by the movie but it's it seems crazy to me that you have these articles blaming the alt-right for the negative reviews. And this is what I mean by The Matrix. There are certainly people who didn't see the movie or who may have seen the movie who are now believing this boogeyman, the alt-right, is trying to destroy Star Wars because it includes more women. But that's just crazy. I mean, PewDiePie did a video about why he didn't like Star Wars, and he brought up a bunch of points. But I guess we all know PewDiePie's a Nazi, right? I'm just, you know, every day I see a news story. Uh, it, it, coming off of the video from my main channel, the CDC, the Trump CDC thing. We know that story is not true. We know that the CDC director flat out said there are no banned words. And it is likely that CDC employees themselves said, hey, listen, if we use these words in our budget proposals, Republicans might shoot them down. So let's play to our audience. That kind of sucks that somebody at the CDC has to do that. But in no way were any words banned, but people believe it. When I see Luis Mensch, Luis Mensch recently called me a Russian propagandist and ally of Cassandra Fairbanks. Ally. It's kind of a weird word for friend, right? And Russian propagandist? Yeah, that's crazy. But she has hundreds of thousands of followers. People believe this stuff. I've found that when I talk to my left-leaning friends about issues in, in news, 
they don't search for stories. They just believe what they heard from TV or word of mouth. And so it feels like what might actually be dividing the in-group and the out-group isn't left and right. It's people who are inquisitive versus, versus people who are trusting. It's not absolute. I, I certainly there are people on the left who are well-read and learned and search for news and, and are able to report on this stuff. But time and time again, the people who, who come to, to my channel, who watch my videos, are people who are searching for these topics, right? You understand the difference? People who don't know about what's going on in Sweden, for instance, it's because they didn't do a Google search. And the people who do, it's because they did a Google search. You see, that's kind of like a defining factor between the in-group and the out-group. Then when you see these stories, Star Wars, the alt-right is trying to bash the movie, it feels like there's a group of people that went and saw the movie and just stared at the screen with their mouths open, not really paying attention to what was going on. And there are people who are like, wait a minute, none of this makes sense. How is this a story? And this is, this is why I, I feel like it's kind of the matrix. There are people that just sort of go with the flow, don't question things and believe whatever they're told. And there are people that form their own opinions. That's why when I look at an event like the Kilroy event and the, the speakers they had, it ranges from you know a trans conservative, liberal atheists to actual people associated with the alt-right and white nationalism, willing to have a conversation with each other, totally at odds with each other's politics. But what I'm trying to figure out what unites this group. And there's an idea of free expression, the right to have your opinion and, and challenge others' opinions. But I think one of the big factors, maybe not the factor, I, I don't mean to disparage people who, uh, who are adamantly anti-fascist social justice warriors, but it seems like there, there are people who just believe whatever they're told, and there are people who are willing to dig a little bit further. Now, granted, it does get a little bad for the people on the out, in, in the outgroup section because you often end up with crazy conspiracy theories. But the left is also guilty of their crazy conspiracy theories too. You've got the Russia Gate left now accusing Jill Stein, and then you've got the far right Pizzagate. You know, it's horseshoe theory. You get to the far extreme ends, and you end up with conspiracy theories. So I don't know if there's a solution or or what's really going on. But I can say that it feels like there is a matrix and there are people who are awake and people who are asleep. I, I'm absolutely confused when I see these stories that are just not true. Sure, maybe an alt-right alt -right group really did take credit for bashing Star Wars. Or maybe Star Wars is just a bad movie. You know, I noticed something interesting on Rotten Tomatoes for The Last Jedi. It's got a 92% fresh, according to critics, and a 53% audience rating. You mean to tell me that out of 138,582 people, the alt-right has organized that? I'm sorry, look, you, you're not going to be able to convince me that some dark corner of the internet was able to gather 100, 100 plus thousand people to give a bad score. Oh, it's 50%. So let's say half. So you're saying 70,000 people hated the movie so much that they orchestrated some hoax campaign, or, or not even that. If we were to say that it was one person with multiple accounts 70,000 times, how many individuals running fake accounts? Even if you had 35,000 people with two accounts, even if you had 17,000 people with three or four accounts, that's still, a, that's still crazy. I, I know I'm harping a, a, little, a little too much on Star Wars, but it's a good example of our culture and this divide and how the media keeps telling you something is true, even though you just can't find evidence. I really, you know, look, it's possible that there's a bubble. I'm sitting in a bubble. But my friends are like stoner skateboarders, you know, who are telling me they didn't like the movie. And it has nothing to do with social justice. It had nothing to do with movie. It had to do with not making any sense and just not being a good movie. So I don't understand how the story becomes that the alt-right are the ones who are secretly behind this. It gets really weird when I read story after story that I just know is not true. Like Sally Cohn getting 40,000 retweets saying dictators ban words. All right, well, technically that's true. Dictators do ban words, but in this instance, the Trump administration didn't ban anything. But those 40,000 retweets and everyone who saw that tweet believe Trump really did this. These are people who are not going to search for the truth. They're not gonna go on Google. They're not gonna Google search it. They're just gonna believe it and they're gonna tell their friends. And that fake news virus is going to infect the minds of everyone in proximity to those people and they're going to bunker down in their tribalism. They're going to say anybody who challenged this idea is wrong, Trump is fake news, it's a lie. And it feels like if, if these problems can't be rectified, as they only get worse and worse and worse, and to, to the point where now Star Wars 
The bad reviews are an alt-right conspiracy. What is this? How is this going to end? Two groups who refuse to acknowledge each other. One group who every single problem they face comes from the alt-right. And the alt-right is a tiny fraction of individuals. It's very small, the actual, the actual group. Leads me to think that we're in for a scary future. The, president's, the present is already scary, and I think it's already going to get worse. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Welcome to Channel 2. This is what these videos really are. They're really loose, not really, not a whole lot of direction, but uh, just when I want to rant about something, this is what you get. So, thanks for hanging out on Channel 2. Uh, stay tuned. More videos when they come. And, you know, I don't know how frequently I'll be on this channel, but make sure you subscribe to my main channel, youtube.com slash timcast. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow.